in all my time in Detroit Lions fandom, this probably was the most special moment to me. The collective chance of Jared Goff in a game in which the city got together and showed his support, the support as he faced his former team, our former quarterback in the Detroit Lions first playoff game at Ford Field ever and a chance to kind of get the proverbial monkey off his back. And Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions did not disappoint. But it's time for you, the SU, I'm talking to you, in on the other side of the screen, in the comment section. If you thought that Jared Goff was not the answer, if you were the one that in 2021 wanted us to draft a quarterback, in 2022 wanted us to draft a quarterback, in 2023 wanted us to sign Lamar Jackson Wilson, and when we didn't do that, draft a quarterback. And in 2024, no matter what this man does, you just refuse to get behind him. And after four years of adversity, support from his general manager, and head coach, hopefully Jared Goff has more than earned the respect of the majority of the Lions fan base. Now, I know that there are some people that just no matter what will not support Jared Goff, but as long as he's my quarterback, I will support him because he was never a guy that couldn't get it done. We seem to forget that Jared Goff went to the Super Bowl. The Lions haven't been yet. We seem to forget that this guy battled Patrick Mahomes in probably the greatest game of 2018, 51-54. That same quarterback had to lead his team to a game-winning dra- drive like we've seen him do so many times before. Why am I bringing this up? Because Jared Goff has been on a phenomenal stretch. He is in the MVP conversation. I don't think he's going to win it because of Media bias, they just will not, are very reminiscent to Matthew Stafford in 2016 when he came out the gate. He was an MVP dark horse and then wind up not finishing the year. Just in, It didn't finish in his favor. And I don't see that happening with Jared Goff. No matter how well he plays, I just don't see it happening when it comes to the media and them voting him MVP of the NFL. It would be something, but I'm sure Jared Goff would prefer wins and Super Bowls over individual accomplishments. So what has Jared Goff been able to do over the past few weeks? This is coming from Detroit Lions PR via Twitter. Nope, that's not it, but this is. This is coming from their Twitter account, and this is affiliated with the Detroit Lions. The only players in NFL history to have a completion percentage of 72% plus throw two touchdowns and post a passer rating of 110 plus in four straight games in a single season is Lions QB Jared Goff in 2024 and Tom Brady in 2007. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you got to forgive me because I'm old. It might be that might be the year that the New England Patriots went all the way, did not lose a single game until the most important one, which was the Super Bowl when they lost to the New York Giants. What else has Jared Goff done? According to Detroit Lions PR, in any four-game span in NFL history, at Lions quarterback Jared Goff is the only player to complete 80% of his passes and post a passer rating of 140-plus in each of his last four games. He's posted at least two TD passes, a 72% completion rate, and a 110% passer rating. And this is the guy that you guys had no faith in, that you did not want to believe in at all, who still to this day, after three and a half years, doing something for your team that Matthew Stafford never did. Whether or not the team put him in that position, that, that's not the point. The point is, he, he, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. With Jared Goff, it did. I think it's funny that we followed Matthew Stafford to L.A. We rooted for the L.A. Rams, the Detroit Rams. But we refuse to root for the guy that has done more than Matthew Stafford has ever and will ever do for this team. I believe, I'll put it on paper, put it on the internet. I believe that Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell, and Jared Goff will be the the three men to help take us to a Super Bowl. I believe that if Jared Goff got injured, our season is over. Two people that could not get hurt, Jared Goff and Hutch. We lost one, we cannot lose the other. But I've always believed in Jared Goff, always, even watching him with the L.A. Rams. 
saw this article with SI, um, and here's what somebody had to say regarding Jared Goff. Says Derek, who is the host of Lion Syndicate. Wait a minute. That's me. <laughs> I'm the host of Lion. My name is Derek. I'm the host of Lion Syndicate. Join the Lone Wolves podcast to discuss the ascension of Goff and how he has proven many wrong since the rough start in 2021. As far as Jared Goff is concerned, I watched a lot of Rams games on my other channel, and I was kind of following the NFL, Derek said. Jared Goff, to me, I don't understand why it is so disliked from the Lions fan base. I have never, ever turned my back on Jared Goff because I watched this guy with the Rams. I saw what he could do. Shout out to Sports Illustrated and John Macron and those guys over there. Did a podcast with them this morning that is available on your podcast format. And we had a nice conversation about many things. And Jared Goff was one of those things. I've always believed in Jared Goff. I've never, never didn't believe in him. And you can say a lot of things about the system and the, the things a quarterback needs. For I was watching Thursday Night Football, week eight, LA Rams versus the Minnesota Vikings, and all I heard the entire time was how good of a quarterback Matthew Stafford is. Matthew Stafford is only as good as the you know, ensemble around him. Without those individuals, He's nothing. He's nothing. We see what a quarter, you see what the difference was. Matthew Stafford threw three touchdown passes all season. And most of that, he was missing Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua. The minute they come back, he throws four in one game. So you had three all season, four in one game. It's amazing what a complement of players can do for a team. Lion Syndicate continues, says, however, golf has proven many doubters wrong with his performance since 2022, and he has emerged into one of the league's best passers. I think he got compared a lot to our old quarterback, Derek said. I think that's the thing for a lot of Detroit Lions fans. Oh, you can't do this. That guy won't do that. But Jared Goff, man, he's been a winner. It's been amazing to watch the MVP chatter and Oh, how good he's doing in this conversation that he's getting as far as the mainstream media. That's your boy, man. That is your boy. And those are my thoughts on Jared Goff, among many other things that we talked about. But if you go back and you watch the channel from the very beginning, this channel was started October 27th, 2021. We are coming up on anniversary number three, as a matter of fact, Sunday against the Tennessee Titans. That will be the third anniversary of this channel. I have never, ever been. There was one moment in 2021 that I think that Dan Campbell was getting a little tired. He was getting a little fed up of JG. He might have never felt this way, but it sure came across that. He was talking about, I remember the podium, him on the podium, he had this, this piece of paper in his hand, like a magazine, and he was talking about how Jared Goff needed to play better, but he didn't pull him. He didn't pull him. Jared Goff wind up missing a couple games. He had an oblique injury, and that's when we had to watch Tim Boyle, but he never pulled him and benched him, and then Jared Goff, wind up, we wind up starting the season 0-10-1. I think we finished 3-3. Three, three. We, we finished 3-3 three and three over our last six games. That took us into the 2022 season. And we all know what happened from that point on. But Jared Goff, man, he's very, and, and I think people are now starting to appreciate. He's always been accurate. Now, he did lead the league in turnovers for a long time since 2019, but he's cleaned that up. He had a rough start to the season, but I think that's because the offense just was not clicking because they were still trying to find the Josh Reynolds replacement. But we found him. His name is Tim Patrick. And ever since then, he has been playing lights out for the Detroit Lions. And I don't think that we've seen peak Jared Goff. I think he is ascending to the point where we could see peak JG in a year or two. Stafford at 36 is playing at a high level. Jared Goff just turned 30, and he's just getting started. This team will continue to get better, and Brad Holmes will continue to put. I remember very clearly, Brad said, Jared, I'm going to put the pieces around you. And that's exactly what he's done. Now we just got to get that defensive line together, and we'll be good to go. So, 
Let me know your thoughts, man. Are you a believer in Jared Goff? Are you still on the fence about Jared Goff? Are you still waiting to call him Jared Goof? Let me know. Jared Goff is my quarterback. And being in Ford Field, that first playoff game, as the crowd collectively chanted his name, was an experience that I will never, ever forget. And I don't think anything will come close except winning the Super Bowl, even appearing in our Super Bowl. I can only imagine what that would be like. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Shout out to Detroit Sports Podcast on Twitter and the guys over at Sports Illustrated for uh, welcoming me onto their platform. And I look forward to doing many more collabs as well. And you might even see some of them on this channel come sometime in the near future. So appreciate you guys. Also wanted to give you an update. My members know this. And I'm going to tell you, I have reached a point where I am finally at a position after five years and multiple channels, hard work and dedication. I'm at a point where I am now a full time Detroit Lions content creator. What does that mean? That means that I have decided to focus on content creation and not split my time between something else. This is what I'm going to focus on. And I couldn't be more excited. I had a goal to do it when I was 45. I'll be 45 in two weeks. And I made it. I made it. It was rough. It was close. I didn't think I was going to make it, but I made it. I made it. So I am now full time. I do do other things on the side, but this is my primary hustle. This is what, this is what I'm putting on because I'm, I'm betting on me and it's paying off. But guess what? Couldn't be here without each and every one of you. So when you hear a creator say the best way to support the channel is by watching the content, liking the video, they mean it. You watching the content, the longer you watch, it tells YouTube, hey, you know what? They like this. Other people might like it too. A thumbs up is tremendous as well. Does the same thing. Commenting, comment. I can't get to everybody's comments, but I do try. I absolutely do try, but sometimes, you know, I make so many, so many videos, it's hard to catch up. You might have one that blow up and then you can't, you can't really stay on that one. Then you have moved on to the next one. But listen, I appreciate that. Don't stop commenting, liking, subscribing, and watching. Most importantly, could not be here without each and every one of you. So I say thank you. And also don't forget about the green gridiron helmet, still waiting on the mini helmets to get in so we can have that giveaway. Speaking of giveaways, we are less than 100 away from 24,000, which will give us a little over a week to make it to 25,000 by the trade deadline. So consider subscribing if this is not your first time here. And if it is, you know, maybe check out some more videos and make that decision. Then this channel is brought to you. I mean it by viewers, subscribers and members just like you, you could be anywhere else on YouTube, but you choose to rock with me. You guys are awesome. Take care of yourself and each other. And as always go lions. This channel is nothing without you. Thank you.